Hi, welcome to the Weekly Presser with Dr. Alvin Parker, of the head coach of the VUU football team. Coach, you had a big win this past Saturday, second consecutive home shutout of Elizabeth City. Can you give us your thoughts on the game? Um, it uh, started a little slower, you know, um, but Elizabeth City uh, came out and played a great game. You know, and I thought, you know, our guys kind of, you know, mustered up a little bit more in the second half and we were able to kind of do some things. I thought the defense played well, especially with some red zone defense stuff we, we did, you know, forced a few turnovers. That's always a good thing. Um, we protected the ball pretty well. That's always a good thing. And um, it kind of led to, to us getting a big victory, a big conference victory. So, you know, we're happy about that. And um, got that straight and I uh, moved on to the next one. All right, we're going to open the floor up for questions now. If you could say your name and your affiliation, uh, we'll start. Uh, Jim, I'll start. Uh, Coach uh, Gary Stein with WCBM Radio and voice of uh, Virginia Union on the stream. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win and great win. Um, you know, it, it seems like you guys, I'm not saying you're discovering weapons because I know that you have them, but different players are stepping up at different points. And, Case in point is Kalen Carver from the game uh, against Elizabeth City State with a couple of touchdown catches over the middle. It seems like the middle was open for you guys in that game, maybe because you have the two big guys on the outside creating so much space. But um, your thoughts on Kalen and what he brings, and uh, is this another weapon that you guys can use now? Um, well, I don't think anybody's surprised by his play. I think, you know, he's a, um, he's a four-year starter for us. He's a I believe a three-time all-conference guy, so he really doesn't fly under the radar too much, you know, but he made some big plays on Saturday, you know, um, so, you know, we're happy with the way he's playing, you know, um, again, he's one of those guys that's, that's been here with us, so he kind of knows what the expectations are, he he kind of knows, you know, when he gets down out there and line up, what type of plays we expect him to make, so, you know, I'm happy with his performance, you know, um, and he makes a lot of things go for us on offense, so, you know, um, again, nobody's really surprised by his play right now. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win on Saturday. Appreciate it. We, wish you would have scored the 21 points in the second quarter when I was there as opposed to the third. <laughs> when I, was, you know, I know you'll take the victory. Um, another guy that kind of stepped up or, you know, jumped off the screen was Shamar. Uh, was it, 14 tackles in the win? I think he had about six or seven in the first quarter, made some big plays for you. Um, a year ago at this time, we weren't really sure if he was going to even be back at Union. Because mm -hmm. uh, he went in the portal, but he decided to return. He's played really well for you guys. Uh, if you can just uh, expand upon his growth from last year to where he is right now, leading the CIAA in tackles. Yeah, well, he's um he's been all leading tackler the last two years. You know, and, um, he's a great player. You know, um, a local kid that that we kind of got in here, and we raised him up kind of from ground up. So you know, um, he's on track to to, to graduate in about two months. You know, um, he's playing, uh, doing a great job of playing some good football. You know, so all of those things that, you know, you want people to kind of come here and do, he's doing. You know, um, so focusing on the student-athlete portion of everything. You know, um, but when Saturday's come, I think, you know, he's had he's had a 17-tackle game, a 14-tackle game, I think a 12-tackle game. So he's done a great job for us this season and kind of commanding a lot of stuff that we're going on that defense. And we got a lot of great players over there in defense. And um, a lot of people have seen that and know that. Those guys have done an excellent job the last couple of weeks. And, um on the um the three game win streak, you know we've done a lot of good things defensively. I know he was one of the guys on your on your coach's show that talked about we had to be more accountable, you know, after that Johnson C Smith game. Where have you seen that improve from the JCSU game to the current winning streak? Um, I can't really say, you know, because I think you know um those guys came to work with a certain attitude before then they come they came to to work with a certain attitude after then. You know, um, I think you can probably just say, you know, probably just a little bit more locked in to, to some of the small details because, you know, when you, when you get a good games, competitive games, the small details kind of matter. So probably a little bit more attention to those type of things, but not really anything different in terms of preparation or, or, or scouting or anything like that, you know, because those guys usually come to play every game. Coach, kind of a follow-up to Sean's question uh, real quick, just about the defense in general. And we talked about this, <clears throat> pardon me, in the post game, you know, after the game against Elizabeth City. The defense uh, in the red zone, they had four possessions in the first half, uh, and none of them resulted in points, period. It was a 
two block kicks, which we can talk about, Jalen Mayo, an interception, and on downs. So talk about the stiffening of the defense in the red zone and what what you saw there. Um, we gave them some penalties and some some other uh, plays that we probably shouldn't have given to get them down into the red zone. So I think those guys really didn't like that. You know, but um, just in terms of just the way those guys play, we got a lot of guys over there that, that, are, that are returning, that play for us quite a bit. So they know, again, what the expectation is. So, you know, um, I think this is the first shutout of the season for those guys. So I was happy for those guys to get that. But I think, you know, um, Sunday they necessarily wasn't satisfied. We kind of went back and looked at the film and some of the things that we kind of left on the field. But I was happy with the plays that were made. You know, um, anytime you, you get a bunch of different guys making plays, like you said, the block kicks, interception, you know, everybody that kind of culminated in that stop on the, on the one yard line, all of those type things, just just put together with a team effort. You know, I'm happy about that. But again, the biggest thing, like I said, with those guys, they're not satisfied. And to piggyback on that real quick, um, you get the fourth down stop from the shadow of your own end zone, and then you march down the field 98 yards and score with Wright's touchdown on that on the pylon. Did you get a sense on the sideline that that was a huge turning point or the turning point in that game because you go in half with the lead and then you, you know, break it open in the second half? It definitely was a turning point because um that was only our third possession of the half. We, we, we really didn't have a lot of possessions. You know, um, you know, we, we, when we got that, we, we was able to kind of march the ball then. That was, like I said, that was our third possession. We had a couple of earlier things that happened, penalties and, Mm-hmm. And, and kind of getting off the field. And, and, and again, hats off to Elizabeth City. They play great defense, you know, um, and they have a great defense, you know. So hats off to those guys. But, you know, in terms of kind of putting it together right there, that was that, that one drive because we only had the, the ball, I think, two times prior to that. So I think we went on maybe five straight drives where we scored a touchdown. So that was something that I was proud of the guys about kind of putting it together because I think those first two, we just didn't get it together. Coach, to follow up on that, that drive that Sean's talking about was all on the ground. 11 straight running plays. Was that like a statement that you guys kind of wanted to make? Like, or, or, I mean, I don't know, but I'm just saying like, hey, let's just run it. Let's just run it until they can stop it, basically. Oh, well, that's going to be every game, I guess. You know, we have to make that type of statement. But um, not necessarily by design. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, um, all offense is kind of built to, to kind of do, you know, what works. You know, um, I think, you know, our pass efficiency is, 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 at, is at a high right now. I think we lead the conference in that. And our, our rush offense is at a high. So I think we can kind of tailor it to do either one right now, you know, that we feel capable of doing. You know, so it was a good thing to kind of see it, you know, um, you know, because, again, I'm a running back by nature. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's always good when you, when, when you when you put it on the ground. But um, I just like when we move the ball. I just like when we get first downs. I just like when we, we make plays. I think a lot of plays were made on that drive. It just so happened that, that every one of them was on the ground. Um, Coach, you've been saying really since the Hampton game, you know, how confident you were on the offense following Mark, you know, after RJ went down. Uh, what did you see in him going back to either spring or fall camp that led you to believe that if – for some reason, RJ, you know, did go down or, you know, was ineffective at points that I feel strongly that Mark can get the job done. Um, I think the thing that I, I seen early on was that you know, he was a competitor, you know, um, and that's the biggest thing. You know, um, at that position, the quarterback, you got to kind of have a, a short memory. A lot of times when, when things are not going that great and you got to, you know, be able to kind of spruce the team up sometime when, when it's going in a different direction. But I think, you know, more than anything, he's a competitor. And that makes that room better. You know, um, him and um, Rosales, both our competitors, they competed a lot during the spring, competed a lot during the summer. So I knew at that point we, we were going to be in a good position because we had, you know, some great signal callers. And I think they both have proven it, you know, um, with where we are right now as far as, you know, um, things are going in terms of offensive efficiency and things like that that they have a lot to do with. You know, you can see a lot of good things happening between the two of them. So, you know, Marcus led us the last couple of games, and um, I like the way we're going. You know, but we know we have an extremely capable room back there that, can, that either one of those guys can get it done. You go back on the road Saturday against Lincoln, you know, on paper. You know, everybody's thinking this is a game you should easily win. What is your message uh, to the team to get ready for Lincoln? Uh, in college football, there's almost no such thing as a gimme, you know. Um, so. <laughs> 
you know, we we preparing again. You know, um, we had practice about an hour ago, so you know, we feel good about what we did today. You know, feel good about the direction we're going in. And you know, um, you want to see things get better. You want to kind of just still be on a, a plateau to peak. And I think all guys are doing that. You know, um, so I think we, we we're pretty healthy right now. You know, um, you know, the guys are just getting it done. You know, so you know, right now, I think the hardest thing right now is just going to make sure that you know, um. We don't become our own worst opponent. You know, um, we feel like we kind of put it together. We got a pretty good ball club that we can go up against anybody. Coach, can you comment on Isaac Anderson being named the CIAA Defensive Lineman of the Week this morning? Yeah. He um he put up some real good numbers the last two weeks. You know, um, mm-hmm. and again, you know, he's he's a big time player for us. You know, so. Um, we're able to kind of, you know, do a lot more on defense when, when he's going, you know. But he's played pretty good and consistent all season. And um, that run with Coach Brown and those guys and Coach Gould, those guys, you know, get everybody ready. I think we played about 12 to 13 defensive linemen this past week, you know. So that's always a good thing when you can kind of mix it up up front. But Isaac is, 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 is definitely the bell cow of the group. And we feel good about it when he's playing well, our defense is playing well. So, you know, um, hats off to him and um, thank the CIAA for, for, for naming him the you know. CIAA defense alignment of the week. Uh, I got one more and I'll pass it to Gary. Um, I think early on we had talked, Coach, about the defense really wasn't getting an opportunity to force some turnovers uh, in the early portion of the season. And I think in this stretch, I think it's like six or seven, maybe eight turnovers you guys are forced. Was this something that the guys took it upon themselves collectively to say, we've got to do a better job of forcing the turnover? I mean, how much was it on them? How much it was it? the staff and Coach Pointer to say, hey, if we're going to win, you guys got to give us, got to give the offense more possessions, extra possessions in games. It was definitely an emphasis. You know, um, probably started with me on down. You know, um, just, you know, more so protecting the ball and forcing turnovers. Mm-hmm. I think our margin right now is maybe maybe plus 10, you know, somewhere mm-hmm. in that in that neighborhood because we're, we're protecting the ball at a high level and, and, and we're forcing turnovers. So that that's kind of a recipe success you know so um it's just it's always been a good thing i think last year we we, we, we preached it and we got what we emphasized and this year we kind of doing the same you know so you know coach pointed definitely you know uh you know <laughs> our team just feeds off of turnovers and i think you know the, the last few weeks we've been done a great job of making sure we force turnovers and just put ourselves in position to, to get more possessions and, and do more with the possessions that we get so you know i'm i'm, I'm pretty pleased by that which I got one more, speaking of uh, putting emphasis on things, the block kicks. How much emphasis do you put on that uh, during the week? And or was that something that you saw that you could exploit on game day? Um, well, um, last year we led the nation in block kicks. So um, I think that was always something that was you know kind of right. I think maybe uh, my, my year here two times. We've led the nation in block kicks, so you know we got a lot of hungry guys over there that just want to do it. So sometimes <laughs> it comes from, you know, um, a unit, but you need somebody to stand out in that unit. And um, I think Jalen Mayo was one of those guys that stood out in that unit, but he had help from the rest of the guys, and he was able to make some plays, you know, in in, in the form of two blocks. You know, not to mention some of the plays that he made um, from his normal cornerback position. So you know, um, again, when you got individuals stepping up to a certain level and doing extra things like that, you know, you're going to get those type of results and. and Ordered for us in two block kicks. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Are there any more questions? All right. Well, thank you, Coach. Good luck against Lincoln this weekend. And we'll see you again uh, tomorrow, actually, or Thursday for your coaches show and next Tuesday. All right. Thank Seven you, everybody. O'clock on YouTube. Seven o'clock on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming. Yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs>